folks, Ariel over here at Pioneer. Where we are having another gorgeous snowy day, as you can see. And I have a little firewood splitting to do. And yep, I know I could do it even set up here where I didn't have to pick these up. But I figured that's good flexibility yoga practice for the day. So why not? Anyhow, I'm splitting this little pile of firewood that's stacked under the uh, solar panels here is the rest of the rounds I'd already had cut up in the old clearing before moving and uh, I just stacked them there for the summer with the intention of getting them <laughs> split before it was winter but summer got very busy with other things that had to be done and you can split wood in the snow with no issues at all so it's happening now they were not intended to be stored there long term that's just where they're sitting till I get them split up and inside here anyhow um, so this isn't my really good splitting block because it's just a bigger chunk I hauled down here so I could split these in place and not have to, to move them anywhere anyhow um bunch of questions I you can probably hear the generator running in the background yes if, for those who have been wondering Fineth, the tiny house, is still fully off-grid, using the exact same setup that she has for years. Um, we are adding power into Clay's shop for his uh, power tools and such, um, which will be handy as long as there is power, but we have no intention of ever being in a, in a situation where we can't do, you know, basic everyday life kind of stuff cooking uh heating and so on without um or you know where we, we don't intend to be relying on grid power for that ever so the tiny house is still on its solar panels as you can see they are not exactly getting a lot of sunlight on a day like today they also didn't for the last few and um so every now and then i in the winter i do run the generator. It's in its own little tiny house box over there, same as it always was, to kind of fill up and top off um, the batteries. And it runs through a little cycle there at the end where it kind of does some battery maintenance, which is probably a good thing because my battery bank is eight years old now and they don't last forever. So every now and then I try to let it run through that cycle so that I hopefully get as long a lifespan out of the batteries as possible, which is of course a good thing since batteries are not exactly cheap. Um, so anyway, if you hear the background, that's what that is. You probably also might hear chickens and or cows in the background, or neighbor cows. Oh, you can probably see Oreo over by the fence. There's one Oreo cookie cow in that herd. Um, she turns sideways, you'll see why I call her that. Uh, there's an actual name for that breed that I know, but I can't think of right at the moment. Um, I think of her as Oreo. And then everyone always asks, where is all the other critters if they're not directly in front of the camera? Really, you can maybe hear chewing a stick behind the camera. One of his favorite occupations when I cut firewood. Velcro was down here hanging out with me, and then she decided she was over the snow and went back to hang out in the shop. Um, she loves it in there. Lots of ladders. To climb on and more interesting things to do than watch me chop wood and the ducks are splashing around the creek they are not one bit phased by snow being ducks a lot of people have asked about that what do they do in the winter well wild ducks here live outside in the snow all winter and the breed we got of course is uh, blue swedish they're from a very cold part of the world as well but our ducks are not actually outside all winter. They have the option, even right now, they can come in the barn if they want the doors open. Uh, they did finally figure out how to go in the barn. It was kind of funny back when I did the tour when we first mostly finished it up. At that point, they'd never been inside. Um, I actually had to catch all of them and take them in and put them in and do that several times before they're like, oh, oh, look, we can do this. And now they figured it out and now they come and go as they please. They still mostly prefer being outside, but they do go in the barn sometimes at night sometimes in the middle of the day, kind of whenever they feel like it, but most of the time they're just out splashing around in the creek because that's what they like to do because they're ducks. But they can be inside 
whenever they choose. But ducks are, that was the reason I, um, you know, wanted to get ducks, not just chickens. They are very cold hardy, hardy because they are so waterproof. They have a lot more body fat on them than a chicken. And so they're, they're just very cold hardy. They're completely unfazed by the snow. Um, the chickens also are pretty cold hardy as long as they don't get damp. So they've actually been in and out through the day so far. Um, they'll come out and peck around for a while and then go back in the barn and then come out and peck around and so on. But they do spend a little more time inside. They don't seem to mind the cold at all. It can be super cold. They'll be outside all day, but they don't like stuff falling on them. They're a little bit more wusses about that. Uh, especially if it's rain, they really don't like that. They go back inside when it's raining. Snow, they don't seem to object to quite as much as rain. And we've got uh, f at least five ladies laying now. I got five eggs so far this morning, and some tend to lay mid-afternoon, which is what it is now, so we may even get some more. Um, so that is exciting. It's another pro tip. When you're gonna split firewood on camera, don't pick the log with three knots on all sides. Really trying to steal my firewood chunks to chew on, not like he doesn't have enough sticks to chew on already. You don't have to take firewood. Um, other questions? I do read the comments, guys. Um, through the summer, sometimes they get skimmed because I'm just so slammed I hardly have time to get a video together, but I try to when I see people's questions, eventually get them answered. In the winter, I should have a little more time to actually type replies, but that can be time consuming, and so I apologize. I just haven't been able to get to doing that consistently through the summer. But possibly in the next few months, as everything else slows down in life a little more, with the weather, um, I'll have a little more time for that. Anyhow, a lot of people have asked on different videos, but what are we doing about skirting the tiny house? Obviously, if you saw any video or photos, when she was parked in her old location, she was basically skirted with those planters, which were salvaged gym lockers that made the lovely flower and herb planters um, all through the summer. And then they were pretty much just the skirting of the house, plus a lot of snow um, for the winter. I do plan to get planters put around there. The, um, the, uh, Lockers had completely disintegrated. You probably saw the video of taking them apart. So they definitely weren't an option to move with us. I would have had to rebuild them even if I hadn't moved and had stayed in the same spot. And that was on my to-do list to get done this summer. But there became a lot of other things that were more urgent, like growing the veggies in the garden, getting the birds taken care of, and so on. So it didn't happen yet. I'm hoping the goal is that before it's spring, we're gonna have planters built so that when the snow pile melts away, can plop them there and there will be flowers and herbs all around the house again next year. Uh, as far as this winter, the skirting is just going to be just snow as that starts to accumulate here and that will be just fine. That floor is super well, well the whole house is super well insulated, but the floor especially so with uh, polyurethane spray foam. It is never chilly, especially with the cork floor inside that uh, just feels warmer to the touch. Uh, I run around bare, well, we both run around barefoot in there, um, have windows open, etc. So having skirting up just for warmth isn't really something I'm too concerned about. Um, the snow's gonna, gonna fill in around there, make a wonderful skirting like it has every other year, I'm sure, unless we get a crazy low snow year, which I'm hoping we don't. Um, I always hope for lots of snow. So that's the plan there. It looks a little bare right now. 
Uh, it's sad to me that I didn't get that done this year, but I can only get so much done all at once. And that's one of the things that just didn't happen yet. Let me see, what other questions did I get a bunch? That's what the critters are doing. Uh, Clay's at work today, as he is many days. I do work away from here some of the time. I think a bunch of you guys know that at various oddball jobs that, again, vary with the weather. I do some snow shoveling for folks, some gardening. Uh, those, as you can probably guess, are at two different times of the year. Uh, do some house cleaning, hay making, general ranch work, firewood cutting, um, all uh, a big variety of different things. But the majority of days, I'm here at least most of the day to take care of everything, keep an eye on everything, um, which works out well. And if you have a question, if you haven't watched any of the firewood videos over the years, if you're wondering what this is that I'm splitting, this particular chunk is aspen. Most of the rest that I've done so far have been pine. That is the two trees that grow within several hundred miles of where I live. These were all standing dead trees. Um, aspens just die because they're not a terribly long-lived species and almost all the pines were uh, killed by the pine beetle. So they have been standing, drying out and dead for a decade or more before I'm cutting them up here. But I, oh yeah, that was another question. Where are y'all going to get your firewood now that uh, you don't live on the side of a mountain with trees obviously right outside your door? Um, <laughs> maybe you'll keep making this stick smaller. It's not so good to throw before you know it's going to be a wood chip. This is how excited he gets about stick throwing. I've never seen any other dog do this backwards excited jump, but he does. He's done it ever since he was a puppy. Um, because in the old place you could you could obviously see there were trees and lots of them right outside the house. Now I wasn't cutting down any of those live trees. Did cut down a few dead ones that were, you know, actually threatening to fall on the house should they tip over, but did that quite a few years ago and since then I had not been cutting any of the trees that you could actually see, you know, from the house. But um, something that's probably hard to realize when you're only seeing videos is even though we are out in what looks like an open, well it is, an open field here, minus the baby trees that are, are planted and someone asked how they're surviving. I don't know, that's hard for me to say. They lost their leaves in the fall and they now look like dead sticks. That could be because they died. That could be because right now all trees that are not conifers look like dead sticks. So I won't really know how well everything survived till spring when things start to, to leaf out. Um, I'm pretty sure I did lose some of those baby saplings due to mostly the, the drought all summer. I simply couldn't get around fast enough to water everything enough, but I'm optimistic that a bunch of them did survive. But anyway, there's not a lot of big trees right around the house. Uh, we are out in the open. If you had gone 200 yards from my little clearing in the trees, before that you couldn't see out of, you would have been an open hay field that looked much like this. Now, if you go a few hundred yards from right where I'm standing, you'll be back on the side of a mountain in the trees. Um, so terrain-wise, we did move quite a few miles, but terrain-wise we're still in the same kind of mountain terrain in Wyoming as I was before, even though now it looks much more open. And I have really enjoyed the view of the mountains that you can't see at all because of the snow, uh, because before being surrounded by trees, which I also enjoyed, you couldn't see the mountains. Now I can. Um, so that's been fun. Anyhow, so even though they're not on our property, there is millions of acres of national forest around here. Um, if you're in the West, you're probably familiar with this. If not, you're probably not. But there are programs to help people get that, uh, all, a lot of that dead wood, um, cleared out of the forest because uh, either it's going to burn in somebody's wood stove or it's eventually going to burn in a massive forest fire that can cost uh, you know houses, roads, lives, etc. So we are still cutting the exact same kinds of firewood that we always have been. We just have to drive into the actual national forest now. You get a firewood permit, I think it's five bucks a cord, um, and 
collecting our firewood from there. But it's still the exact same kind of stuff we were splitting before, um, and we still have access to lots and lots of firewood. So that's the firewood question. And then for anybody who's not familiar, yes, pine and aspen are both basically softwoods. Uh, that's the only kind of thing that grows around here. If you live near maples and oaks and all that stuff, it is better firewood. It doesn't make any sense to ship it thousands of miles to get here. So everybody in this area burns the exact same thing um, because it's what grows here. That's what you do. Anyhow, uh, that's the firewood question and where we're getting our wood. Um, other questions have I seen ask a bunch. A bunch of these ladies ask me stuff about uh, clothing that I find comfortable and practical for homesteading. Um, I'm actually going to try to do a video just on that for these days when I'm inside. Um, I see some ducks walking, waddling through the snow. It is still snowing little flakes, snowing thicker earlier. Uh, I don't know if this is going to stay yet for the year. It it might. We, you know, usually at this time of year, or well before now, this is actually late. Um, that one's got two, three massive knots in a row. We're going to let the rest of that sit for a minute. Um, often, you know, up to a month before now, we have snow that has stuck to the ground, but this is not the first snowfall. It's, it's come and gone a few times. This might stay. It's definitely been staying in the mountains just above me, but we won't know for sure until we see what it does. I am hoping for a really, really big snow year. We did have a severe drought all summer long, extremely dry, and our norm is to get about an inch of rainfall per month in the summer, and there was a couple months where we had pretty much zero. Then, in the past few weeks, we got a nearly record-breaking amount of rain. If it had been just a few degrees colder, I'd probably have snow up to my waist right now, but it was hovering kind of right on that line, just a couple degrees above freezing, so it came down as rain and not snow. And that probably was really good for all of the trees and plants because they had been so dehydrated and that let them get a, a good soaking into the ground before it froze solid for the year, which should let them go to sleep, um, you know, well hydrated instead of dehydrated which hopefully will be good when they all wake up in the spring. Because even a bunch of the mature, um, you know, wild trees and stuff were starting to look pretty stressed. Because in addition to the drought, we'd had an extremely hot summer for us with temps into the 90s. We can easily have summers where um, that's getting pretty little. It is. It's pretty much too little to throw. Yeah, you've got to go find me another longer stick. Um, we can have summers where the temps never, you know, even reach 80. So that was hot and hard on things. So I, and I love snow and just watching the snowflakes fall makes me happy. So I am hoping for, um, you know, snow drifts to pile up to the eaves. But we'll have to wait and see what actually happens in the winter. But this is my project for today. Get this little pile of firewood split up. Um, that's answers to a few of the questions that I had on the top of my head that people have been asking. Um, if you want to see just little daily posts, I know I've thrown this out there before, go to MeWe. It's like, works pretty much exactly like Facebook, except no censorship and no spying. If you go there to sign up and you see something that's costing money, you can buy a paid account uh, if you would like to support them. I do, I choose to, but I used it for free for quite a while before that. And you can totally sign up for a free account never pay a thing. But anyhow, um, there's a link right under the video to my MeWe page, but the folks on there get to see usually everything before you folks who just watch videos, because it takes me longer to get a video put together and uploaded. And uh, there's just lots of fun little posts about just some daily life stuff that we're doing around here. So if that's your kind of thing, you might like to join the thousands of people over there. If not, that's just fine as well. Um, I do have a, a long to-do list of videos that I want to get done this winter, covering questions I've gotten asked a lot, and 
uh, we'll be getting through that as I have time. Otherwise, I don't think I have a whole lot else today. Um, thanks for being here. I, I hope you guys enjoy it. I know different people seem to enjoy different things. Uh, you know, some just like watching life. Some like to learn things about gardening or cooking or off-grid or tiny houses. Some people just enjoy the nature and wildlife. Some of you like all of it. I hear the channel has a few cat subscribers who really enjoy watching any of the videos with birds in them. Um, so anyway, I don't know what all has brought all of you here, but I'm glad you're here. Glad you enjoy it. And we will chat again next time. I'm going to turn on a book to listen to or a podcast because that's partly how I uh, learn, a lot I le uh, the learn a lot of what I learn is by listening to other people who know more than me. And pretty much any time not making a video and doing something mindless like cooking, cleaning, splitting firewood, I listen to audiobooks or sometimes podcasts on different topics that I'm interested in learning about. And um, over decades of doing that, I've learned a lot of useful things. So, oh, sometimes people ask me about my favorite books. Uh, I'll try to remember to link under here. I've got a page on goodreads.com, uh, so I didn't have to repeatedly type a long list of titles and try to remember them all. It's got 700 something or so of my favorite books. If you're a reader and that interests you, you can check out what some of my favorites have been over the years. And hope you guys all have a lovely day. I live here at Finest. Thank you so much for watching these videos and spending some of your very valuable time choosing to do that. We hope you found something that was useful, educational, helpful, maybe save someone else some time and trouble, or just something just plain beautiful. If you don't want to miss any videos, subscribe and hit the bell. And thanks for coming along on our journey as we build a new little homestead with our tiny house and everything to come.